Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this is a video for anybody that wants to have a quick review of how to do uh, transactions into a general journal. So I'm going to be working with the following things and at this point you should pause the video and make sure that you have them in front of you. Uh, the items you will need is a blank general journal, a list of all your transactions, uh, I would recommend you get the cheat sheet out that I shared with you, and of course a pencil. Okay, uh, I hope you have everything. We are going to be doing the transactions from the Extreme Adventures uh, simulation. I'm going to do probably the first four or five transactions with you, and hopefully that'll be enough to get you started. And if it's not, then of course, you know, you can watch the video over and over if you need to, or um, ask me, uh, ask your neighbor, or you can even view the key. Um, basically, use all of the resources available to you so you can um, start to get this thing figured out. Okay, so the very first transaction we're going to do is right here on May 1st. And it says that we received cash from owner as an investment. And that was for $15,000. All right, so to be able to do this transaction, I need to record it over here in my general journal. And just a quick reminder, you are always going to record the account that is the debit transaction first. And then directly beneath that, you will record the account that is the credit transaction. So let's do this first one together. Uh, we received cash from our owner. Anytime we receive cash, it is a debit. And the way I know that is because my cheat sheet tells me. It says right here, if you receive cash, it's a debit. So, since I know that I received cash, I'm going to first put May 1st for my date. And on the first line, I'm going to write cash. The document number will always be listed at the end of the transaction. This particular document is R1. The R stands for receipt, but at this point you don't really need to know what each one stands for, just as long as you know that that goes in the document number column. So I'm going to put R1. Post reference stays blank for the time being. And then for debit, I'm going to put $15,000. <clears> now I still need to do the credit transaction um, my owner gave us this fifteen thousand dollars so if I go back to my cheat sheet again the owner has two accounts they have the capital account and they have the drawing account the capital account is used whenever they give money to the business the drawing account is used whenever they take money from the business. In this particular transaction, the owner is giving us money. So it's a capital. And on my cheat sheet, it says capital is always a credit. That works out because that's what I need over here is credit. So I'm going to write the owner's name, which happens to be Brian Dawson, capital. So I'm going to type that right over here. I indent just a little bit. I don't need to list my document number again. I still have a blank re a post reference. And right here where it says credit, I'm going to put $15,000. Debits and credits always equal. So if you put one number here, you have to put an equal number here. And every transaction has one debit and one credit. Let's move on to our second transaction. On May 1st, we paid cash for rent, $1,800. So back over to my general journal. I don't need to type May again, but I am going to put one. This just helps me realize that this is a new transaction. Now I paid cash for rent. If I go to my cheat sheet, it says if you spend cash it equals a credit. So anytime my business spends money and it doesn't matter what we purchase but anytime we spend money we have to record that as a cash credit. In this particular case we have purchased rent 
And if you go to your accounts, you can see that rent is an expense. So, back to my cheat sheet. Expenses are always a debit, every time. So I'm going to put rent expense back to my transactions. Oh, if I can get it to work. Here we go. Back to my transactions. We paid $1,800 for rent and C1 was my document. C1 1800 Now we already discussed that my credit is cash. So directly below rent expense I'm going to put cash credit of $1800 and I've got another transaction done. Let's do May 2nd. So I start the transaction by putting the date May 2nd. This time we paid cash for electric bill, which in parentheses tells me it's a miscellaneous expense, for $105. This is very similar to the transaction we just did, it's, uh, except this time instead of rent expense, we're going to use miscellaneous expense. C2 is my document number, $105. I paid cash, so that is my credit. Let's do another. May 4th, paid cash for supplies, $450. Once again, I paid cash. That's my credit. My cheat sheet tells me so. I bought supplies. Now, I probably would be able to figure out that this was the debit just because I know the cash is credit. But just in case if I want to double check, I can go to my cheat sheet and it says supplies is always a debit. So that helps me confirm that I'm on the right track. So this take, took place on the 4th. We bought supplies. C3, $450. I paid cash, that's my credit, also $450. Next one, paid cash for six months worth of insurance, $1,200. All right, I have two accounts that deal with insurance. One is called prepaid insurance, and it's an asset account, and the other one is called insurance expense, and it's obviously an expense account. So here's prepaid insurance and insurance expense is right over here. I am going to work with the prepaid insurance on this one because since I am purchasing it, it is um, an asset. I haven't used it yet. The only time insurance becomes an expense is after I've used it. So for this particular transaction, we're going to use prepaid insurance. So May 4th, prepaid insurance. C4, $1,200. Cash, $1,200. Okay, I'm going to do one more because the next one can be a little tricky. Uh, a lot of people struggle with the fact that some accounts are, or sometimes we buy things on account. When you buy something on account, it just simply means that you're going to pay for it later. And if you go to your cheat sheet, um, it says that if it's on account, it's going to be accounts payable or accounts receivable. And basically it just depends if we owe somebody money or if they owe us money. If they owe us money, it's an accounts receivable. And if we owe them money, it's accounts payable. So for this transaction, we are the one that's buying the supplies. May 7th, it says bought supplies on account from done supplies, $900. So we purchased supplies. That is our debit.
because supplies are always a debit. And M1 was our document number. We bought $900 worth. Now, we bought these from Dunn Supplies. And if I go to all of my accounts, I have a liabilities account called Accounts Payable Dunn Supplies. So that's what I'm going to use for this one because that is the people that we purchased the supplies from. And we just give them a credit of $900. Okay, at this point I'm going to let you keep going. Um, like I said earlier in the video, if you get hung up at all, please raise your hand, I'll come help you. Or you can ask one of your neighbors. Or I also have some keys available uh, at the front of the room. So go grab one of those if you want to double check yourself or if you think you're a little stuck. Okay, good luck.